Howdy of you delicious people. I'm here today to review Return of the Living Dead. Here's the thing that I started to find out about myself uh, much more recently. I love the unstoppable zombie com like idea concept. Um, I really just like the fact that we kind of really just think that oh yeah and just go and pop it in the head and you're dead and you're definitely gonna be just be done with the zombie yeah i'm just like in an unstoppable zombie no matter what you do it just continues to come after you so that's perfectly uh, much more of an interesting film than having to eventually like easily and quickly figure out how to stop these things and then it just goes into an easier film um I really like the more complex approach of it and like I would never like to live in that kind of scenario but I'm glad that other people have because <laughs> they would end up dead frequently um, because there's like could you imagine also if you were to get a scratch from this zombie and it would turn you into one like there would be no way you could live through this like not only would you try and go after the head and then it wouldn't work? You get scratched by a zombie when you chopped off its head, so you would still become a zombie. So there's like no way that you could not become a zombie no matter what you did, no matter how many body parts that you torn and 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 ripped apart and whichever, however strong that you absurdly are for whatever reason. Um But yeah, I actually just really enjoy this movie it really has good theme music which theme music <laughs> like who should give a sh about that for a zombie film but no i really like the music that's played in here it has a da -da 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 -da, that kind of weird kind of music but it has this kind of like interesting build of you just kind of having this bah, bah, bah. it like the music is so great it adds to the already interesting film and i just thoroughly like love the combination of good theme music mixed in with uh, a really actually amazing uh zombie film so we have gone through and had so many day of the dead kind of things or night of the living dead kind of things and so George Romero has done so many freaking number of these things. Land of the Dead, uh, Night of the Living Dead, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so eventually when it comes down to this, I find this movie really intriguing because of its simple nature. Uh, meaning it, uh, so let's, uh, let's get down to it. What is the teeing up version of this? But also, it seems like this movie is on HBO Max. I didn't conveniently go and watch it on HBO Max, uh, simply because having some kind of Wi-Fi bizarre issues today also. Um, so I have to kind of conveniently come up with creative ways to otherwise be able to upload my videos today. Um, but yeah, so like I didn't watch it on HBO Max. I just bizarrely found it on some other app and watched it that way. So... What would I, uh, like, so, what would I grade this movie if I were to grade it? Uh, I would probably have to say that this is a really great movie. Like, it's a really great zombie film. Like, for a lot of people, like, this is probably, like, one of the movies to put in their collection of zombie films. But some people may find other zombie films to be better than this one. Or some people might say, of course, the more current zombie films are just a tweed bit better. Um, but I don't know, I really liked this one. Um, it has a combination of a very interesting story that feels very unique compared to all the other stuff that has ever come out. Like, this has a unique, uh, appeal to it. And so, it also doesn't really give these people hope at the end that they're gonna survive. They, bas they basically say that, like, dude, these people are effed. Um, like, there's no way that these people are eventually just going to survive this whole thing. Uh, hence why I guess there were sequels to this. There was part twos and part threes, I guess, after this, which is kind of interesting to eventually go and check those out, uh, because I never have. I've only seen this one. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens after this first, uh, jump of this film. So, 
Uh, with that said, now let's tee it up. Let's tell everybody what this movie is about. Well, it seems like this movie is a tie in the film Night of the Living Dead. Uh, so I think that's kind of interesting. So, uh, so I guess it's kind of interesting to go back to that movie and watch that one and then come to this, I guess. I didn't realize that. I just went into this one and I'm like, oh yeah, I guess this has some tie to another, uh, film. I don't know. Uh, so going into this, uh, we end up having two guys, uh, both Freddy and, uh, and Frank that are to be these, uh, kind of warehouse workers where it seems they are, uh, having a warehouse full of skeletons or, uh, half, uh, chopped in half animals, weirdly, uh, so that way you can kind of see the inner workings of them. Uh, and it seems like these are characters that seemingly deal, uh, with, uh, kind of cadavers and stuff like that. They have, uh, some freezer where they kind of hold a cadaver and all kinds of things. So, uh, so eventually Freddy is to ask Frank, like, hey, what is the weirdest thing that we have ever collected here? And so Frank is like, ah, so you want to know the weirdest thing? Oh, well, I have a story to tell you, kid. Go ahead and just sit down and I'll just, uh, tell you a tale. So Frank is to eventually tell him about a tale of Night of the Living Dead where, I guess supposedly there had uh, been certain uh, certain dead bodies that had wound up from that story that had uh, been placed into these containers. And I want to try to get this story the best way uh, that I can humanly talk about it. But like, so there might be some muddied waters here and some paraphrasing and whatever going on. So eventually these containers are to be held within this warehouse and so eventually Frank is to go uh to show Freddy this container and they end up accidentally opening it up and well not exactly opening it up they accidentally go and kind of like smack one of the barrels and one of the barrels easily uh like unleashes its uh smoke slash uh, smell slash aroma of sorts of this dead body who, to where all of a sudden this, uh, like stuff that is put into this, uh, container is to be some kind of smoke that is to spray all into this warehouse and be seemingly into the lungs of both Frank and Freddy. And so... All of a sudden, these two characters are to eventually just kind of uh, eventually wake out, wake up after getting kind of knocked up, knocked out of the this gas. So, all of a sudden, these two characters are to wake up from their uh, them seemingly getting knocked out to eventually find that things are eventually coming back to life. And so it seems forcibly that Frank has to call his superior and tell him what's going on because we all of a sudden have uh, cadavers in a freezer that are coming back to life. We all of a sudden have uh, half a dog coming back to life and so on and so forth to where eventually the... Uh, the thing left inside the container is also gone missing as well. The body that had been uh, supposedly left in this container is also gone bizarrely missing. So uh, Frank is to eventually call his superior to get his superior down there. And all of a sudden they are to have to forcibly deal with this now cadaver. And they end up going and of course... Uh, taking a pickaxe to this uh, zombie-like character to realize, well, it's not all that quite easy to take this thing down. So eventually they decide, after finally roping this thing up, weirdly, 
uh, they decide that they want to go off and uh, and go and burn this body uh, down by this like mortuary that is to go and of course burn bodies. But the problem with these bodies getting burnt, uh, or the problem with this one zombie body getting burnt, is eventually this uh, smoke goes up into this like furnace of this uh, crematorium. I don't even know that's the right word. And all of a sudden the smoke starts to spread. This, the smoke starts to spread to the graveyard next door. And so that all of a sudden just re-rises all of the graveyard zombies. Uh, and so, yeah. So kind of giving most of it, like pretty much the setup of the movie away. But at the end of the day, like, I just wanted to just kind of, like, tee it up for people who don't know what this movie is about. Or eventually, maybe this movie might become familiar to somebody to be like, oh, yeah, I remember this film. And so, yeah, so let's just get into it. Let's go into spoilers, because I've already kind of teed it up anyways. So, at the end of the day, it is spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time to spoil this movie. Uh, before I go into spoilers, let me know in the comments below, uh, what's your favorite zombie film? Uh, eventually, if it's something that I've never reviewed at some point in time, uh, let me know. Uh, definitely I want to find other zombie movies, or probably find the best zombie film. Um, or the most unique one. Maybe, uh, some people will just be like, oh, well, I liked X amount of part of this series. Or I liked whichever zombie film, uh, especially if it's something that I probably haven't covered. Uh, if anything, I will have a zombie movie playlist uh, that you can go and check to see if your movie is to have eventually been something I have reviewed. Then I'll go ahead and check it out. Like, definitely want to go and find other uh, zombie movies that I've never heard of. Uh, or I probably have probably heard of them, but whichever. So... Let's go into spoilers. I already mentioned where this is at. Uh, supposedly right now, the second is recording. HBO Max. Go ahead and check it out there. Or you can dare say go through any number of apps that I've been using fairly reliably. Uh, like a TV Crush or a Fox HD Movies or a number of other things that I've probably uh, said through any number of reviews. Go ahead and do that so that way you can go ahead and watch this movie for absolutely free. If you have no ability... To spend money on a number of apps. <laughs> so, let's go into spoiler time, if I haven't already. Spoilers now. So, like I said, so, uh, Freddy is the newcomer to this warehouse, and so Frank is taking him under his wing and just kind of showcasing, uh, evidently there are certain skeletons that come from India, weirdly, like as if they just have, like, like, they're, like, uh, breeding up skeletons. <laughs> I don't know why they come from India, uh, but Frank ends up making some kind of weird joke uh, that evidently they're, like, they're finding skeletons everywhere in India, weirdly. Anyways, so... Uh, so Frank eventually goes on to uh, kind of tell Freddy, uh, like, what all he's to be expecting to do, how he is supposed to package things, and it seems like everything is going well so far. So, Freddy goes into this office to go and uh, kind of show uh, uh, show himself some books uh, and some kind of catalogs of stuff that they have, they're kind of dealing with on a daily, daily basis. And then so that's when Fred ends up asking Frank about like, hey, like what is the weirdest thing that we have here? So... Because eventually Frank is to show uh, Freddy the cadaver and is to just kind of let him know, like, hey, like, we have some, like, really creepy stuff here. And maybe all this may not be for you, but mm, whatever. So, eventually, uh, so, Freddy is asked about the most unique thing. Frank goes down to the cellar and eventually shows him this container. And so, we open this container up accidentally and then all the gas starts to spread like i said before uh so freddie evidently is to have a girlfriend who has these very 
uh, gothic, punk-like friends. Uh, and so it seems that they are to really just be waiting around for Freddy to finish up his shift. And so we end up having this uh, very large punk-like man called Suicide who's driving the car, who is to realize that they are going to have to wait possibly two hours to wait for Freddy to be done with his shift. So they decide to just go in and hunker down into this cemetery and just check things out because they have nothing better to do. Uh, let me reset for a second here. So... All of a sudden, we have this whole punk rock esh like group. Uh, we have Spider. We have Cat. Uh, we have uh, Cassie. Uh, we have Chuck. I think we have a Scuzz or Scud. Uh, let me let me see the the uh, Scuzz. There we go. We have Scud. We have a guy named Suicide. Uh, weird, goofy names. There's the one girl who's basically topless through this whole entire movie. Her name is Trash. Uh, like, weird, goofy names. Um, and yeah, so I went through, and I went through IMDb, and I couldn't, like, perfectly, like, see all these characters, like, when they were actually in the film. So I had to figure out a way to try and like come up with some kind of like wiki or whatever so that we can see more accurate depiction of some of certain these characters. So if there's anything that seems inaccurate, I do apologize about, but without a doubt, let's go further on into this story. So So we're at the cemetery. So we have this girl who is named Trash who has this weird fantasy about dying because she's very dark and emo and whatever. And so this girl has this weird fantasy about dying and it's all of a sudden getting her like rock hard. <laughs> or like uh, for a female equivalent, well, like uh, I would say that she's getting a real stiffy, but like that's a female equivalent would be like she's getting really hot under the collar. Uh, so she... Um, so Trash is to mention uh, to Spider that, uh, like, the way of which that she wants to go out by weirdly having all these old men uh, going and uh, tearing her clothes off and, uh, and attacking her and so, and biting at her and all kinds of things. So all of a sudden Trash is to all of a sudden just start ripping her clothes off and then she ends up kind of like disrobing herself. And so we end up just having a girl just kind of without anything on for the rest of this entire film. Which I'm just like, okay, like that doesn't bother me. Any like, great. Because <laughs> this girl is just like, she's, she's just going. And then she ends up regretting the fact that she ended up like ripping off all of her clothes. And I'm like, well, that was the mistake that you made, lady. Uh, cause eventually it starts to rain all these, uh, punk like characters all scramble into this car and eventually the car is like leaking and they're like, Oh my God. <laughs> cause eventually like they, they are to mention that the, like the rain feels so weird. It feels like acid rain almost. And so eventually we get to where like the car is leaking and they have no windows in the car and so they're just kind of like waiting it out uh, for eventually Freddy to show up. So now that I've covered that and I, I kind of got all that bit out of the way, let's go back with Frank and Freddy. So eventually what ends up happening is when uh, Freddy and Frank are to wake up from them being seemingly unconscious after that blast of that container being open. And all of a sudden, the body that has been inside it is starting to decompose of sorts or is starting to eventually uh, be disappeared for whatever reason. So both Freddy and Frank are to wake up to eventually go uh, back upstairs to kind of be like very winded and very sweaty. And so all of a sudden Frank is to go and spray some deodorant, deodorant around. And so 
all of a sudden, Freddy is like, hey, what's that noise? He all of a sudden starts hearing barking. And so, all of a sudden, they are to realize that the half, the chopped in half dog is all of a sudden coming back to life. Or had come back to life. And Frank is like, kill it! And he's like, killing it. Trying to like, smack it with this, uh, uh, smack it with the, the, uh, this, uh, God, what is it? Uh, crutches? He ends up taking one of the crutches and smacks the dog and it's like, hey, I guess we can't kill it that way. So, eventually the body, uh, the cadaver, is come back to life and is now smacking against this door. And so, like, both Freddy and Frank are trying to, like, figure out what the heck to do. And Frank doesn't want to call the cops, but Freddy's like, maybe we should call the cops. And then also Freddy is to mention to Frank, it's like, well, why don't we call the phone number that's on the container and Frank is like, that's calling the military. That's just as bad as calling the cops. So eventually Frank just decides to call his superior. And so uh, this guy named Bert ends up showing up. And so what Bert is to end up doing is uh, forces these guys to confront this uh, this cadaver in this, in this freezer. And... So when this guy comes flying out, uh, all of a sudden when they end up forcibly doing both Freddy and Frank end up having to like hold this guy down, uh, Bert ends up going and jabbing uh, this thing in the head with his pickaxe. And so eventually they think that they kill it. Well, they'd be wrong. So eventually then Bert is going to chop uh chop this guy's head off with this saw and still does not kill it. It just leaves the rest of the body just kind of flinging around. And so it's like knocking over shells and all kinds of crazy stuff. And so they end up finally going and grabbing the body again and, 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 and smacking the body down on the ground and they end up tying it up. And so Bert comes up with a master plan of going to the crematorium uh, to go and uh, burn this thing down so that way they can probably hide the fact of any of this happening and they could probably get away with it scot-free. So, uh, so they end up starting to chop up this body into smaller pieces. And so they end up going to this crematorium where they end up uh, meeting this guy named... I think his name is Ernie. Uh... I want to confirm that. Uh, no, his name must not be Ernie. His name must... <laughs> his name does not even exist here. Uh, that sucks. Uh, I th Let me pause here for a second, because I think his name is Ernie. Man, my memory skill. <laughs> it's horrible most of the time. But every once in a while, I just remember a name somehow. So, eventually Bert is to go to Ernie. <laughs> and I just realized, Bert and Ernie, oh my god, Sesame Street is in it up right now for the return of the living dead. So, uh, Bert goes to Ernie, and uh, I, I can't stop laughing at that. So, uh, and so Bert makes a deal with Ernie to like, hey man, I owe you on this guy right up top here. Uh, this guy should be seemingly um, going and uh, doing something with a body, trying to like work out its, uh, God, what is it called? Uh, it's like he's doing and, and kind of working the muscles of this body. Rigor mortis, there we go. And so... Uh, so yeah, so let's go into here. So both Frank and Freddy are to go with Bert to this place. So Bert is to mention like, hey man, I'm just uh, going and uh, like getting rid of some animals. I'm going to burn them. Like, uh, like you'll, I'll owe you one if you do this thing for me. And so Ernie realizes that these animals or whatever is in these sacks are alive and so Bernie's like, hey, man, like, I can't burn, like, uh, animals that are moving. That's inhumane. So you need to, like, you need to kill them or, heck, I'll kill them. And then, like, we'll go and we'll burn them. And so Bert is like, well, that's the problem. Uh, 
but like you need to like you need to confirm to me that like that like you will like be okay with what I have to say here. And Ernie's like, okay, sure. Like, yeah, you still technically owe me one, right? And so Bert is to show this guy an arm that ends up grabbing him. And he's like, oh my God. And so Ernie is like, okay, so I guess I will do this, but you are going to owe me a big one. Like you are going to owe me. And we never really have that moment where the owing the owing the person one is going to really work out in this movie because uh, it just won't happen. So Ernie goes and takes all of these body pieces and goes and burns them like Bert wants. And so eventually it's a sigh of relief uh, for all these people. And so the smoke goes into the sky and so all of a sudden that leads to the graveyard eventually going and uh, seemingly having some corpses slowly but surely come from out of it because the like if it wasn't raining this smoke would have just went into the air and would have been no problem but the rain kind of forced this smoke to like uh turn into like a liquid kind of thing and forcing it down into the grounds of this graveyard so kind of like the worst possible weather that we could ha possibly have to create a zombie invasion so now, seemingly after everything is to be seemingly done with, uh, we all of a sudden have both Freddy and Frank who are all, all of a sudden feeling the worst that they have ever felt. You could just like see in their faces that they're like ghost white. And I mean like, like whiter, like as white as this shirt, like as far as skin tone is, like you could just tell like they're like a bluish whitish kind of uh looking character so both frank and freddy are to forcibly now need to call an ambulance to uh to eventually get uh an ambulance there to deal with these characters bird is to tell both of these uh ambulance people that both freddy and frank had been poisoned and so Bert is to try to skirt around or try to not say what kind of poisoning or whatever that this all ends up being. But then eventually he is to be forced to eventually kind of deal with this whole situation anyways. We also have some colonel off in the distance in this movie who is to be waiting for a phone call and he has all this like secret uh, like computer technology like stuff. Uh, that eventually he's going to deal with if some huge problem arises and he's at home. Evidently, he's a person that has to be on the f on call like 24-7. Uh, hence why he is to have the uh, title, I guess, that he is to have of being a uh, colonel. Uh, which I am immediately trying to find out what this guy's name is. Oh, well, it's too late. So... <laughs> Colonel something. I don't know what it is, but I know it was a colonel. So, uh, pushing on. So, we end up having these people, uh, the punk rocker-like people, who eventually at some point have to forcibly uh, separate because they're running all over town. Because eventually they... Uh, they eventually decide that since they can't wait in this car, because eventually they're going to continue to get wet and rained on uh, because this guy's uh, hood of this car isn't that great. And really, they can't drive this car because evidently the car is toast. So eventually this group of punk rocker-ish like people all decide to go off into the warehouse. And so eventually both of these uh, people are to seemingly wait for Freddy's shift to be over. So eventually they're looking for Freddy and Frank, trying to figure out where they are. So maybe they can like talk to them and say, hey, can you like peace out early kind of thing? So these kids cannot find uh, the said Freddy. And so we end up having Freddy's girlfriend, who is Tina, who is starting to look further uh, into this warehouse much more than the rest of the group is. So... Eventually, uh, 
Tina is to go down to this basement where this container was to all of a sudden stumble upon this zombie uh, in the middle here who is to be called the Tar Man. Weirdly. So, all of a sudden we have this zombie who opens his mouth and is like, Brains! And it's like, and so, Tina is to run to eventually have this inability to be able to make it up the stairs because she ends up cracking one of the stairs and falls through the stairs. So now she ends up trying to go quickly to this one, um, this metal, like, uh, like, like, uh, what is the right word? Metal storage room of a thing. And so she ends blocking herself in there. And so weirdly, this zombie is uberly intelligent for whatever reason it is for this story purposes. And so this tar man decides that he's going to concoct this one pulley system to eventually break the handles off this door. And I'm just like, you have got to be just like kidding me. Like this zombie is to just like intelligently be able to figure out how to get to this girl. So all of a sudden we decide uh, in this movie that the rest of the group eventually is to uh, go and try to find where Tina is. And so they realize that seemingly there's a gap in the stairs, so all of them jump, and so all of them end up going down the stairs. So all of a sudden we have the largest guy in this group, Suicide, who ends up going and grabbing the sheet to all of a sudden see there is to be Tarman there, the zombie. And so all of a sudden, uh, so Suicide's head is to be cracked open and eaten. And so uh, Tina, who basically, like her door is to have been uh, like broken anyways, she starts running up these stairs and like, hey, everybody get the F out of here. So everyone starts running like crazy. And so now they're to basically... Uh, go on to like try to like figure out a way out of here but there seemingly is never really truly a way out so this group tries to go through the cemetery and uh is to try to hold out there but then eventually they realize that all the graves of all these characters are all to uh re-rise from the grave so all of a sudden at some point we start to see some bodies starting to drop uh, first off is to really be the girl named Trash who ended up, uh, seemingly finding some clothes to just kind of, uh, put herself in something. So, uh, coincidentally, Trash is a dive the way of the witch that she was to say she wanted to die with a bunch of men just kind of grabbing onto her and biting into her and killing her off for her to eventually just reappear as seemingly this scary esh like zombie that is to be without clothes again and i see scary esh because all of a sudden weirdly this one woman can extend her mouth open to eventually go and eat people which i'm like okay this is so weird that uh we end up having certain zombies with certain abilities and it also seems we have like a lot of just intelligent zombies that are to eventually win uh, certain kind of paramedics and stuff arrive, they all of a sudden go onto these uh, walkies or radios or whatever to try and call more cops or more paramedics to this location for them to eventually just get annihilated. Uh, so, or there's just a lot of real like trickery spots that eventually uh, a lot of these uh, zombies eventually take advantage of these people that don't realize what's really going on. So, uh, so eventually, so we have these first paramedics that ended up arriving uh, for Freddy and for Frank. And so it seems that uh, these paramedics are trying to go and find a pulse of these characters and are trying to eventually, uh, like, kind of figure things out and these paramedics are to realize that these people have the symptoms of being dead <laughs> that it seems the both of these characters are to be room temperature they have no pulse 
and like their and weirdly their tongues are orange. Man, I honestly would have not liked to be either Freddy or Frank in this kind of instance. Like meaning, like the actors who had to put this role together, where it's like they not only have to probably go through a bunch of makeup, but then they also have to like go and have an orange tongue and all kinds of things for this film. And then eventually we have like Freddy who is to have like his eyes basically acided out. So he's kind of like going through a scene and probably smacking in, into any number of things. So, uh, cause he's basically blind. So, uh, so yeah, so we end up having, uh, these paramedics that are just like, well, Hey man, we're going to go off and we're going to go and, uh, and radio to our people like what's going on uh because we just like we're we're baffled we're stumped by this and so all of a sudden the paramedics go off to go and get some stretchers and to go to radio what's going on and all of a sudden we have the zombies from the graveyard appearing uh and killing them all off quite easily and so of course we end up having one of the zombies end up radioing to send more paramedics so another set of paramedics is to be sent in. And so here is when we start getting the rest of the people uh, to go into this one uh, crematorium where both Bert, Frank, uh, and Freddie and, uh, and Ernie are. Uh, so we have both Casey and... And Chuck, who are to be uh, back in the warehouse, and like they're safe because uh, uh, eventually they're in some part of the warehouse where it seems like they are to be safe. Uh, and when they are to try to get some uh, like phone and try to call, a zombie ends up breaking through one part of it. So they end up finding a part of this warehouse where they are safe. So like they're kind of just stuck there. So. Uh, so Spider and, uh, uh, Tina eventually wind up with, uh, with Bert and those people. And so, uh, and I want to say there might have been, oh, uh, I think Scuzz was also there also, because everyone else is dead at this point. Uh, yeah, like Tina or Trash is dead. Uh, suicide was killed early. So, yeah. So, anyways. So, uh, so Spider and Tina are to be uh, there with uh, Ernie and Bert and all those guys. So, Tina is to just try and consistently try and comfort Freddy as he is to slowly but surely eventually become a zombie. <laughs> slowly but surely. Uh, and so... Eventually, we just consistently start seeing paramedics being called to eventually be killed. We eventually see police officers who end up the same way. And just consistent time over time, we just watch on as Bernie and er uh, Ernie and Bert are to watch on as like people are to come here to eventually get killed off. And Spider is just like, man, we got to like do something to make people aware of what's going on here. And so really what their plan is, is like they want to try to get to a phone somewhere to let people know what's going on. Like we end up having the operator who keeps sending people out there and it just eventually gets to a point where finally there is to be a helicopter that goes into this location that is to spot what's going on. And so... Eventually, there is to be a police force that is to be presented that ends up putting together this blockade. And so we end up having all these people uh, at this blockade these like that these police have set up. And eventually, Bert is to try and call. Uh, no, wait, let, let's kind of let's build this up. So. Uh, so what, it end, what ends up happening is. That Bert wants both Freddy and Frank to eventually be put into a separate room. Because eventually they're probably going to turn into a zombie. And so Bert is trying to justify, like, hey, I don't want 
uh, them to hurt us or hurt themselves, so let's go and put them in a separate room. <laughs> so, Bert goes and takes these guys and puts them in a separate room because Freddy is going through rigor mortis anyways, so it's just a matter of time. So, they lay them down into this room, and Tina won't leave uh, Freddy, which is a big mistake, but... So they go and they kind of lock them into this room uh, when eventually, like, they get Tina, but still. Anyways, pushing on. So Bert and Freddy, or Bert and Spider are to decide, well, hey, we're going to go and we're going to run for this car and we're going to go and try to eventually either... Uh, find a phone or find somebody that can help us. And like Bert and Spider are wanting to go and pick up uh, both Ernie and Tina. But really there's too many zombies there that they just can't like they can't risk opening a door to open up a zombie. Like like basically Spider and Bert had to like fight their way to get to this car and, like, they were lucky to even have gotten that far. And so, eventually, they, did, they just decide, Bert and Spider, to leave these two people to eventually go into the warehouse. And so that forces both Bert and... Or forces, forces both Ernie and Tina to eventually go up into this attic uh, that Ernie is to have in his crematorium. Or morgue? Morgue, crematorium, whichever you want to say, whatever this place actually is. Um, there's probably even an actual name for it. Um, the only thing that I remember about this whole movie is there's this one place called Anita Medical Supplies. So, eventually, uh, so both uh, Ernie and Tina go up to this attic. And so they end up kind of hunkering down there. Uh, Ernie is to eventually put this piece of wood over this door, uh, so I guess no one could get, uh, into this, uh, this spot. So, eventually Freddy is to, I guess, smash through this door after they go and they douse acid onto him, when eventually they realize that, uh, Tina was to be attacked by Freddy, and so Tina is desperately, like, calling for these guys to help her. And that's when Tina gets out of that place and eventually they make a run for uh, trying to get to one of the cars. So Bert and Spider make it back to the warehouse. And so now they're talking to Casey and Chuck. And so uh, Bert finds out that uh, they can't go to one phone because there's a zombie in that room. And so Bert is like, well... I guess we really have to go down to the basement then. And they're like, well, hey, there's another zombie down there. And it's like, Bert's like, well, either way, we need to get to a phone. So we're just going to have to deal with these zombies and figure out how to take them down. Um, Ernie is to also go and grab uh, one of these zombies that was like, that was kind of like, that only has like, like it's all skin and bone, or it's basically all bones left of this character. And so eventually Ernie is to try to like talk with the zombie and figure out why it does what it does. Evidently it's painful to die. And the only way it's not painful is to eventually just eat brains and the pain goes away weirdly. So I'm like, you would have thought that like the brain part of it would just like keep them alive or like, so it's kind of like survival where it's like you have like warm bodies where warm bodies would eat the brain parts and would like consistently give them memories of their past life. Like, I think that's a better kind of thing, but like, I guess eating brains and you would think then like they wouldn't specifically go after brains. They would just go back to any body part and just eat it. Why brain specifically? I'm so confused. <laughs> Like, the brain part should matter. It should just be any living tissue should just be eaten so that way it should, like, have the, the pain go away of being dead. Uh, I don't know. That's just me. But anyways, so uh, they end up going down to this basement. They end up opening this door. 
uh, Tar Man ends up coming out and like, wah, brains. And so Bird ends up taking a baseball bat to Tar Man, taking him out. And so eventually they run down to this basement and they go and they call the number that's on the container. Uh, or no, wait, I think Bird ends up calling the police and the police end up getting like just easily torn apart because all the zombies just gather together and walk down there to go and take down all these police who are like firing these small teeny little guns. And so all these zombies are just like just easily just thrush thrashing through all these police officers. They all end up dying, every single one of them. Bert is to be on the phone while this is happening, and Bert is like, Can you hear this? Like, man, they're getting killed, they're getting annihilated. So Bert ends up hanging up the phone because these guys aren't prepared for what's going on. And so Bert instead ends up calling the, the military guy, the, the colonel, and is to let him know, like, hey man, I I guess we opened up your container, and Bert just ends up just telling him the whole truth. So the colonel is like, okay, like, all right, we've kind of prepared for this whole moment. And so, like, all right, we're going to be able to just kind of deal with this. So the colonel, the way of which that he dealt with it is to basically just release this, this bomb on this town and to just basically blow up this town uh, or just blow up, I guess, a certain radius of this town and... All that did was just to just to uh, bring up a big, huge uh, green thing of smoke from all this thing. So it ended up killing a ton of people. But really, it also just released probably another more zombie invasion like thing. And oh, so let's also get back. Let's also get back to the Tina and Ernie moment where before the bomb was to get released and create that huge smoke cloud. Bernie and Tina were in the attic just kind of waiting it out and all of a sudden Freddy was desperately trying to get to them because he's like, like, I love you and brains. <laughs> Why won't you let me eat your brains? Because I love you. And so Freddy, I guess, figured out how to, being blind, of course, ends up finding where this ladder is to get up to this attic and... Like, how would he know exactly where they are? Because he supposedly can smell her brains or whatever. But still, like, I would just be like, if like, you're you're telling me that these zombies are way too intelligent. And I would much rather like stupid zombies. So not only are these zombies seemingly unstoppable, but they're intelligent also. I'm like, how? What? Like... Man, we have some, like, Einstein-like zombies going on here. And I'm so just like, man, this is, like, the worst, the worst possible kind of zombies you can ever have. So, evidently, Freddy is to make it up to where uh, Ernie and Tina is easily. Because even though you have a piece of wood against this one door, I guess Freddy is just so strong that he just bizarrely makes that wood piece disappear to easily open that door and just be like ha like i'm coming after you i'm gonna eat you and so we i think what we really have is like ernie was having his gun on the back of the head of tina while she wasn't looking because it's like hey like we might as well just go out like it's better to just go out this easy and quick way instead of having to be torn apart by uh, by zombies so I think what ends up happening is that Freddy ends up appearing, Ernie ends up shooting both uh, himself and Tina, and they probably end up coming off to be zombies. Uh, but Bomb also takes a lot of sh out. Uh, so that's how the movie just kind of ends. I hope that I covered most of this movie. There's a lot of things going on in this film. There's a lot of like little tiny pieces uh, to have been taken from this, so... If I didn't do this movie perfectly, if there's little details that I forgot about, I apologize. But otherwise, um, I really enjoy this movie. It's a real enjoyable zombie film. And like just the little like pieces, the kind of build up the, of this film is like this movie probably has a really good zombie apocalypse build up 
which like I'm okay with eventually having this be like a uh, like a what is to be possibly a slow burn kind of a movie uh, to some people maybe because they're like man I want to see zombie apocalypse like that and like or I just want to see the opening sequence where or like I want to see that we're already in a zombie apocalypse but like this gives us such a good story that like. I don't care how this is eventually presented. It's such a great zombie film. And more than likely, there are probably others that are probably just as good or better than this one. So eventually, I'll hope to check them out. Without a doubt, I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.